Say goodbye to annotations and say hello to end screens, the latest in clickable calls to action on YouTube that actually work on mobile devices. That's right, annotations didn't, and more than half of views come from mobile devices. Now you can take advantage of those viewers and send them to your website, other videos, you name it. End screens are meant to replace annotations, which is why you have to choose one or the other. So older videos that use annotations are fine, but newer videos, you have to make the choice. End screens exist at the end of your video, up to 20 seconds at the tail end. In this 20 seconds, you can place elements within a grid. It sits right there in what I call the breadbasket of your video, so it's not getting in the way of any interactive cards or the video play controls. But still, it's a pretty large canvas to work with. You can add a number of different elements just like interactive cards. You can add a video or playlist, a subscribe button, a channel button, or a link to an approved website. And you can place those all over that defined canvas in really whatever arrangement or order that you like. One thing to note is that you must have at least one video or playlist to save your end screen. So if you just have subscribe buttons and links to your website, it won't save and it won't work. So this is this was not a requirement within annotations, but it is here with end screens. But I think it's still a great workaround and it's great to keep people um, on your channel for watch time purposes anyways. Some cool examples of end screens, as you can see, Late Night with Seth Meyers. They have a subscribe now button as well as a watch episodes link, and then they have two watch more clips. SNL, also an NBC channel doing roughly the same thing. And we have Netflix right here. They have a subscribe button, and then they actually have a video pop up at the very last second, uh, at the very last couple seconds, which is kind of an interesting strategy. But let's go ahead and jump in live so I can show you how I add end screens to my own videos. Here we are on one of my video's watch pages, and I'm gonna hover over here to our end screen and annotation link. They group those two together now. So now you'll see that we're on our end screen editor, and you can switch over to annotations over here. You have to choose one or the other. You can't use both. So we're gonna just jump in and start adding elements to our end screen, which you can see just the very end of your video, the last 20 seconds, is already roped off for you to start adding elements to. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll forward because I placed a, a bit in my video. It looks like these little bars and shelves. That's in the video itself, and I did that specifically to put some end screen elements on. So the first element I'm going to place is a subscribe button, which is going to be your channel avatar. And you can see we have that grid showing me where I can place it, and I'm going to do that according to the background. Cool. Next, I'm going to add a link to my website. So I'll click on adding a link element, put in the URL I'd like to go to. Change the title, which I'm gonna put at um, get some free premium lessons. And then you can choose from a number of different calls to action. In this case, I will pick learn more. Lastly, for this link URL, I'm going to choose an image. And since this is linking to my course guide, I'm gonna choose a picture of my course guide for this element. So we can see now it places everything sort of automatically in that upper left-hand corner. So it's gonna have that red indicating that it's something is overlapping. So it won't let us save if items are overlapping. So I'm gonna just shuffle these things around real quick and get our subscribe and link uh, buttons or elements into place here. So those are looking good. Now we can't just go ahead and save now. We can't have just our subscribe button and our um, link to our website. You'll see we have a little air up here. At least one element must be a video or a playlist. This was not the case with annotations, but it is with end screens. So I have this area that I saved here for watch more. So we can add a number of different videos, one or two. We can add playlists, and I'll just add one video for now so I can show you what that looks like. You can automatically add your most recently uploaded video if you don't want to think about it. You can have YouTube think about it for you and choose the best video based on you know, what other people are liking on your channel or what they've seen or haven't seen. Or lastly, you can choose your very own video or playlist. So it's really flexible and you can use it in a lot of different situations. I'm gonna play around with this and fast forward real quick. And this is what we landed on. I have two videos in my watch more section. I have a welcome video uh, in case people don't subscribe or want to learn more. And then I have another section here where YouTube can pick whatever video that they think is best for the viewer next. One of mine, of course. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that and just preview what it looks like by clicking this little preview toggle. So you don't have to jump around to a bunch of different screens. You can click that and there we go, look at that. Very nice. We can hover over the subscribe button to subscribe. Our link looks really nice. 
and the viewer can go right on ahead to watch more videos. If you're a VidSEO Premium member, you can go into your course toolbox and I place a number of different end screen uh, PDFs and Photoshop files. These, these are the same couple of files I use to create my end screens here in this tutorial. If you're not a Premium member, then definitely click that Learn More link and learn how to become one. Would love to have you.